Boys and girls, which should probably come as a no shock to anybody with currently Disney Marvel and its current state and what it's been like such a disastrous dumpster fire over the last few years that a X-Men 97, yes, not the reboot, not the reboot, don't call it a remake, no, 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 it was the continuation of the most beloved children's series, the X-Men, the animated series from back in the 90s that so many of us grew up on. It was many people's introduction to X-Men for the very first time. Yes, the absolutely amazing and beautiful show that had incredibly stories you had incredible storytelling and a wonderful animation that everybody know and loved and of course with a theme song that i'm sure you can hear in your head right now as i'm speaking the words it's something that so many of us was so iconic for so many of us out there throughout the years and now we have the new series from Disney+. Plus. Now, I was one of those that was cautiously optimistic about this series. The guy, the showrunner, DeMeo, who has recently been fired from the series, is, or from fired from Disney, is no longer with the company, um, was saying some of the right things. He was talking to some of the original showrunners. It was something that I was cautiously optimistic about. And then, of course, we heard all of the woke marketing that came out with our dear sweet boy, Morph, and exactly how they're treating him. And now, all of a sudden, they're just using him as a virtue signal for their non-binary stuff. Because guess what? It's not even going to be brought up in the series. So, of course, after such a wonderful marketing campaign that was, of course, was going to <clears throat> ingratiate them with so many of the fans in the modern era, concerning how many of us absolutely cannot stand the agenda-driven stuff that they've done to so many of our favorite franchises, well, just like we all expected, the series is now bombing on Disney+. Plus. The ratings are absolutely abysmal. They're in the toilet, and it's another thing to just laugh at and make fun of for all things Disney, especially Disney Marvel, especially as they try to destroy some of our most beloved franchises, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to laugh at them, we're going to make fun of them, and we're going to eject them and just dance on the graves of what was once great, the Marvel brand, and it is no longer, because as you can see from this article over here from CosmicBook.News, X-Men 97 ratings bomb on Disney+. Plus. The numbers are for the first two episodes released, which aren't as good as What If?, and what if could this ever mean for the future of X-Men 97? Well, here we go. So the X-Men 97 looks to be another Marvel bomb on the Disney Plus streaming service, according to the ratings, which can only be looked at as a big disappointment. But you know what's not a disappointment? If you hit that like button, if you share it with all your friends, and you subscribe if you have not already. I first had an inclination the ratings aren't that good, when again, Samba TV didn't post anything. And Samba TV normally posts things right away when it's good, but because Samba TV are acolytes of the cult, they're down for the spirit of the age, they do try to not make these companies look bad, because that, of course, gives them access. They are quiet when things are a disaster. <clears throat> Trust me, if they can't spin it to try to look good, they keep their mouth shut. I guess they go by the old adage, if you can't say anything nice, it's better not to say anything at all. Which, eh, can't blame them for that. Samba TV claims to have a better rating system than Nielsen, so when Samba TV doesn't report on the numbers, that means they're likely not good. And lately, they haven't been reporting on Disney or Marvel numbers when they used to every time. Its company's wiki page says Disney is an investor. Oh, wow. Color us shocked there. Case in point, both Samba TV and Nelson didn't report on any numbers for Doctor Who on Disney+. Plus. But the UK provided numbers which revealed horrible ratings, as we know and absolutely are very well deserved. Rest in peace, Doctor Who. Which, by the way, if you are a Doctor Who fan, come join us Sunday nights at 6 p.m. over on Rumble exclusively for When Who Was Good, where we review classic Good Who episodes. Samba TV also didn't report any specific numbers for Marvel's Echo, and while Echo made Samba TV's weekly ratings list, again, no numbers mentioned, I believe made the Nielsen charts the week it premiered, bear in mind that all five episodes released. Of course, following the premiere week, Echo jumped off a cliff and didn't make any of the ratings charts. Yeah, it literally, they knew it was going to be a bad, they knew it was going to be bad from the beginning, which is why they dumped it all the time. So are the X-Men 97 numbers good on Disney+. Plus? So let's take a look at the X-Men 97 numbers, which we get via Variety, who says Disney filled them in on X-Men 97's hit 4 million views in 5 days. Oh yeah, so these numbers come exclusively from Disney and exclusively given to Variety. I'm sure you can totally trust those numbers. I'm sure they're completely and totally not ac completely and totally accurate and not overreported in any way shape or form. Well, in a similar situation to Echo, that's for two episodes released, as for the first two X-Men 97 episodes were released the same day on March 20th, so that averages to only 2 million an episode. Or how about this? Variety says Disney told them that X-Men 97 is the most watched season one premiere for a full-length animated series since Marvel's What If debuted in 2021. Well, Devin, you had a couple of What Ifs since then? Wow. Guess things aren't looking so good for What If, huh? Hmm. 
What if only you'd written it properly? What if only you'd gotten people that actually love the source material and written it properly? What if only you hadn't completely and totally betrayed the fans and called them racists? What if? What Disney did say is that X-Men 97 beat out Iwaji and the Proud family louder and prouder. Well, I can't imagine that would be hard considering what you did to the Proud family. But in, in, has anyone actually even heard of those two animated shows? Well, I only know it because of why I do this. I haven't. And is this X-Men and Marvel we are talking about here? Exactly. That also means any premieres for full series animations on Disney Plus prior to What If? Season 1 did better than X-Men 97. Probably the Star Wars animated shows, I'm guessing, if that counts. Variety also points out that animated shorts, such as Star Wars Visions, I Am Groot, and Zootopia Plus are excluded from this count. Why? Did they do better? I'm sure they did, since they were one-offs and they were from a while back, and everybody still loves Groot. Guardians of the Galaxy is literally the only Marvel movie that you can legitimately and honestly say might have made them a little bit of money over their production budget and marketing value in since literally probably Endgame. Like, it's been that bad. Uh, Marvel continues to disappoint on Disney+. Plus. There are a lot of ton of buildup for X-Men 97, which was a continuation from the massively popular 90s series. Maybe a week prior to the series' debut and a day before its LA premiere wasn't the best time to announce the showrunner had been fired, which we talked about at the beginning of the video. It probably also wasn't a good thing to include a non-binary character where non-binary didn't even exist and change up Rogue and others. Yes, if you've seen any of the drawings of Rogue and how she looks, what did they do to our poor girl? All those curves are gone. Where's that ass? Hashtag restore Rogue's ass. That said, the Marvel fans did not tune in to what watched to give it a 90, the did tune in, give it a 92% Rotten Tomatoes audience score. So maybe they will have legs as word of mouth spreads. Nielsen ratings won't be available for about a month. And that's one of the things. A lot of people in our little corner of the internet, like some WW Pro and a few others, actually did say that they enjoyed the first two episodes of the series. And they gave it some pretty good ratings, like an 8 out of 10 and a 9 out of 10. But at the exact same time, they're also expecting it to take a literal go off a cliff as the episodes continue to go on. So... What seems to be happening is the majority of Marvel fans are done with Marvel fights in Phase 4 with such a huge disappointment. They're also done with Disney Plus streaming service and nothing to good with it. It's only the Disney stands who keep subscribing month after month, which is why their ratings are nowhere near what they used to be And when Disney Plus launched. It proves fans are tired of all the BS from the Hollywood clowns. And yes, it comes down to the fact that fans do not trust these companies anymore, and especially Marvel fans do not trust Disney Marvel anymore. And that's why they're not jumping on these shows to watch them away. Watch them right away. It's the reason why Guardians of the Galaxy did not have the kind of box office opening weekend that it should have because the trust is gone between Disney and its fans and especially Disney Marvel and its fans. And we are way beyond once burned twice shy and it's going to take seriously good word of mouth for anything from Disney Marvel to succeed going forward. And as of right now, so far with X-Men 97, we just haven't seen the legs pan out for that. Will it in the future? Will it turn out like Guardians of the Galaxy? I have no idea. But as of right now, it is not looking good. And it looks like X-Men 97 might be one more disastrous dumpster fire of a bomb for Disney Marvel. And after all the woke marketing nonsense they put behind this show, it's exactly what they deserve.